Episode 275, The Husband's Secret. Everything stabilized and Blair finally felt cold. She dug out flints from the grass pile. Little snake, help me start the fire. I'm a little cold. Blair shrank her body and her voice had a slight shiver. The little snake grabbed the two rocks and knocked them together with brute force, smashing them into two. He then picked up and wanted to continue. Blair's lips twitched. She saw the little snake's actions, but it was already too late to stop him. If this were to continue, the flint would be wasted. However, at the sound of the next knocking, a series of sparks came out from the rocks. They landed in the grass pile and a wisp of smoke rose. Blair opened her mouth wide. This is the first time you're starting a fire, right? You learn really fast. The little snake smiled at her shyly, lowering his head to protect that wisp of smoke. It's in my legacy teachings, the little snake replied. Blair said, I knew it. Your species is cheating. The little snake lay on the ground and kept on blowing the grass, a flush appearing on his clean face. It was unknown if it was from blowing air or some other reason. The smoke got increasingly bigger and thicker. Suddenly, a series of flames darted out close to the little snake's face. <sniffs> the little snake was very surprised and quickly scrambled back. The leopard cubs didn't especially pay attention to starting fires and were also scared by the little snake's reaction. Roar! The leopard cubs bounced up and backed off a few steps, their hair erupting as they arched their backs, looking just like porcupines. Blair threw a glance at them and then looked at the little snake worriedly. Are you all right? The little snake was still shaken. He looked toward the spark with fear in his eyes. Blair took a careful look at him. The little snake's face was still clean, but he only seemed to be shocked. She felt relieved. Did you get burned? Blair walked over to the little snake, helped him up, then touched his face. Her hand's temperature was still higher than the little snake's skin. The little snake rubbed against Blair's face and wheedled. I got burned. The young man's voice was soft, his eyes red, looking innocent and pitiful like a rabbit. Blair's heart instantly ached, pulling him and walking to the cave's entrance. She caught some rainwater with her good hand and put it against the little snake's face. She said gently, Does it feel better? It still hurts, said the little snake. He couldn't have been burned that badly, could he? Blair let go of her hand and looked at the little snake's face, realizing that his lashes were all fine. However, the snake beast men didn't have any hair on their bodies, and she couldn't see the extent of his skin injury. It looked quite normal to her. Blair caught more rainwater and continued to ice his face. Howl! The leopard cub's cries rang out from the cave. Blair turned to take a look. Third was picking up firewood with his mouth and adding it to the fire. The fire was about to be extinguished soon. Eldest reported it and then joined second to protect the fire. Your hands are cooler, ice it yourself. Mommy will go take care of the fire. The little snake didn't reply, seeming a little unwilling. Blair let go. She left after picking up the little snake's hand and wet it outside, not feeling at ease. She then put his hand to her face. When she turned to head back, the little snake also went back with her. Third, who was adding firewood, was choked by the smoke and teared up. Even his fur near his mouth was wet. Blair tapped his nose, looking amused. Thank you, third. Blair pushed him to the side as she said this, swiftly adding firewood. The three leopard cubs' fur was all wet and they were tearing. They shivered as they stood by the fire, getting some warmth. Only the little snake stayed far away as if the fire was the devil not daring to get close at all. 
Blair smoothed the leopard cubs' fur so that they could be better dried by the fire. She then reached out for the little snake. Come and take a seat. The fire won't be darting about anymore, Blair coaxed softly. The little snake walked over to her side hesitantly, sitting next to her. Sensing the fire's temperature, the little snake moved behind Blair, his pair of long and skinny arms tightly circling around her waist, behaving very close to her. Blair patted his back, her heart aching for him. Only then did she get the feeling that the little snake was her child. The leopard cubs felt unhappy. They imitated the little snake and went to hug their mommy's legs. Blair suddenly had two extra big accessories hanging on her legs. There was another one who didn't manage to grab onto her leg. He hung onto her arm instead. Blair was caught between laughter and tears as she shook her body. What are you guys doing? Come and dry your fur. The leopard cubs didn't move and were bent on hugging her. Blair felt helpless. Since she couldn't get them off her, she let them be. The rain poured down. A patch of wild weed at the ground tugged off and became muddy. One would get a lot of mud onto themselves when they sat down. The three guys held bags and scattered the wheat grains into the muddy ground, making a hole with each step taken. The rain has gotten heavier. Roger looked up at the sky, his mind full of his mate at home. Blair could only stay at home to play. She must be feeling very bored. Rex, if there's anything you want to say, say it quickly, Roger said impatiently. Stephen also looked toward him. Rex continued to scatter the wheat grains and said, Females' bodies are too weak. If we didn't take care of her properly and something were to happen... Before he finished his words, he felt the fury from Roger and Stephen. What are you talking about? I'll definitely be able to take care of Blair. Roger's eyes had turned red, and he clenched the wheat grains tightly, releasing cracking sounds. Stephen's eyes also emitted a ferocious glow, but he couldn't help but recall the dream that Blair had mentioned. The male in her dream was too much like him, He almost took the same path as he did. In fact, all the things that the scorpion beast man had done, he himself had almost done the same. He should be thankful for that damned eagle beast man. If the eagle beast man hadn't snatched Blair from his hands, he wouldn't have the chance to change either, and his Blair wouldn't have been able to live until today. His legacy told him that it was very hard for females to live on, and young snakes were all born in the same year a couple had become mates. As for the future, there were either no traces, or the young snake's eyes would be the ones recording the female's death. Stephen knew that females were very fragile, but after having lived with Blair for a few years, he realized that females' lives were a lot more important than he imagined. If he had used his old methods to take care of her, he'd probably go down the same path as his ancestors, doing what that scorpion beast man had done in the dream. Rex immediately explained, I'm thinking that if one died and their soul still exists, then we'd still be able to find Blair if she were to encounter a misfortune one day. We might even... Stephen and Roger weren't stupid and immediately understood. Both of them abruptly stopped their work. Revive her, Stephen suddenly continued. Rex and Roger exchanged a glance, and Rex nodded, saying, That's right. That's what I'm thinking. Rex was different from them. He wasn't good at communicating his emotions. To get his mate's affirmation, he could only contribute quietly, waiting for his mate to discover his intentions. When he encountered situations, he didn't just think about how to resolve them, but he also planned for the future. Therefore, he was the first to think of this point. Roger anxiously looked around. Rex said, Don't worry, there's no one else here. We mustn't let anyone find out about this. 
Roger's breathing was a little quick. We need to study this in secret. Naturally. Rex also agreed. Stephen didn't say anything. After he listened to what they said, he continued scattering the wheat grains. Everyone was selfish. If other beastmen were to find out about the soul crystal, they'd definitely keep it for themselves. It was the same for both of them. It'd be best if they could get their hands on all the soul crystals they could get and control the situation. If an accident were to take place one day, they'd still be able to find the one with Blair from the rocks. After they were done with the conversation, Rex said, There isn't much work here. You guys can go back and accompany Blair. Roger's mind was still in a mess, and he answered half-heartedly. He then left the wheat field and walked off. Stephen didn't have anything to do even if he were to go back. He didn't pay Rex any heed and then continued scattering the grains. The golden leopard ran rapidly in the rain. The rainwater wet his hair, sticking it very close to his body. It was like he had a set of glistening hides that even the bear parts weren't obvious anymore. Roar! Roger entered their home and let out a loud cry toward the bedroom door. It was very quiet inside, and Roger immediately sensed that something wasn't right. Roar? He ran into the bedroom after quickly shaking off the rainwater from his fur. As expected, there was no one in the room. Blair must have run out to play and had brought along Catherine and the leopard cubs with her. The rain was so heavy, he hoped that she didn't get drenched. Roger then ran out anxiously, hesitated for a moment, then ran for the cave where they met with the little snake. The little snake circled Blair's waist tightly, looking pleased. He was so comfortable that his eyelids were drooping. Catherine suddenly woke up. Her small face furrowed up, and she looked like she was going to cry. Blair immediately removed the arm on her waist, and the leopards from her legs then carried Catherine up. She must be wanting to go potty. Blair had just positioned Catherine's legs when she peed. She almost wet the animal skin. Blair heaved a sigh of relief. Looking at the stunned little snake, she said apologetically, I'll bury it later. No need, I'll clean it up, the little snake said immediately. Roar! An anxious leopard roar rang out from the forest in front of the cave. The little snake immediately put on a defensive stance and rushed the very front, blocking in front of her. It's Roger, Blair said lightheartedly. As expected, it wasn't long before a leopard with a bare neck ran into their vision. Roger saw Blair from afar standing behind the little snake. His heart returned to its original spot. He ran into the cave and immediately changed into his human form. When he saw that Blair's hair was a little wet, he said angrily, Why did you come out by yourself? I was so scared that my soul was going to leave me when I didn't see you at home. <sighs> Seeing that Roger was being fierce to her, the little snake immediately exposed a fierce expression at him. Blair patted the little snake's back to gesture to him that it was fine. She suddenly thought of something and her expression changed. You guys are done planting? Blair's heart tightened as she anxiously asked, Where's Stephen? Is he back? The little snake became nervous as well, his vision quickly searching the bushes. It seemed like he was going to run off for his life if he saw the slightest movement. Blair's heart ached. She took the little snake's hand and said, Mommy's here, don't be scared. Roger rolled his eyes. Stephen is still in the fields, only I came back. The little snake and Blair both felt relieved at the same time. Roger rubbed her hair and then looked at the leopard cubs close to the fire. The fury on his face was replaced by feelings of love. Let's go home. Stephen will be returning soon. <laughs>